In this presentation, I would like to present you a novel ecologically friendly technology for the synthesis and modification of kombucha derived bacterial cellulose in order to produce textiles of desired physicochemical and mechanical properties. The procedure of manufacturing cellulose in the form of a stable hydrogel bacterial cellulose ensures the desired properties for the application of such a material, for example, in the textile industry. Uh, particularly, I would like to present you my project, which we made commonly with scientists and artists. And this project was named Bacterial Cellulose for Clefts Production in Sea and Space using Kombucha Microbial Consortium. It was uh, commonly realized, performed by Analog Astronaut Training Center, my company, my previous company, Space Garden, Department of Physical Chemistry and Electrochemistry at Jagiellonian University in Kraków, <laughs> Department of Design Art School Kraków and Department of Arts Pedagogical University also in Kraków. Bacterial cellulose was obtained from a yeast bacteria kombucha culture. You can see on this slide um, a solution with something inside. <laughs> it looks like a, some cave, but it is not a cave. Um, on the top you can see multi-layered bacterial cellulose, which looks mostly like pancakes. And below you can have you, you can see the fraction of yeasts and several bacteria um, that are um, that they, they like mostly uh, environment without oxygen, so they, they stay here. And this symbiotic consortium um, consists of about 30 microbial species. It is very well known as tea fungus. It can be drank, you know, this solution. It is very healthy, some people say. Uh, also, it has common name as uh, scooby. It likes to grow on the black tea. This is the most common medium and very cheap and easy to breed. We, in our projects, develop different kinds of media which are based on algae bioreactors and on waste wastes. So this is very interesting considering future um, environmental issues. Um, the process of bacterial cellulose manufacturing and modification um, in this project was optimized in order to obtain a maximum recovery of raw materials, minimal energy consumption, and to ensure the use of only natural and renewable resources. So this was our main technical Mm, goal. The obtained materials were characterized in terms of their uh, wettability, mechanical properties and flame resistance. And moreover, the morphology and composition of the materials were determined by using a scanning electron microscopy and infrared spectroscopy respectively. Here on this slide you can see mm, that we tried, we tested um, various kinds of materials at various stages of um, sort of produ production. So first on the left up, you can see the raw material in electron microscopy. Then you can see how this material looks uh, after lyophilization and then after coating. Mm, we use several coatings depending on what we want to achieve at the end. Of course, I would like to share with some beautiful images, electron uh, microscopy images of acidic bacterium producing bacterial cellulose polymer. It's beautiful. And here in the magnification, you can see that all these cells are droning in the net of polymer fibers. Here also you can see that these fibers are randomly located everywhere uh, this kind of um, morphology allows from one side elasticity I mean um, flexibility but from other side uh, very strong material here you can see some result from our anti 
uh, a resistance um, for um, flames for high temperatures and we got very nice very nice results as you can see here so this material doesn't like um, to be in fire it's because of water of course that is inside this material uh, here again you can see uh, bacterial cellulose but this time we see um, the experiment with water uh, first in A you see uh, raw material um, with coating, um, very simple coating, and then B material is um, dried material after incubation one week in uh, fresh water. In C um, case you see the same material but incubated in salt water for seven days. So here, especially, you can see some incrustations, some diffusion of salts into the polymer fibers. You see the crystals of salts that are there. Of course, if we would put this material back into the water, um, everything will be not dried, but it will be flexible again. Because we wanted to produce textiles, of course, we tried to generate some experiments with human skin, with uh, first answering the answer if this is healthy to have this kind of gloves, if there are no allergic responses. Um, and our first experiment was to uh, produce uh, wristbands, which you can see here on the A, they are newly made. <laughs> and then in B and C, we see um, the same wristbands used in two-week analog simulation. This was lunar mission spectra in um, Poland. And these wristbands were uh, used by analog astronauts during the whole time of the analog simulation in the habitat. So even taking the shower, they, they used, uh, they, they had these wristbands. We also tried um, t-shirts, but not made of the only kombucha material. We were, um, we didn't want to do this first. We wanted to, again, analyze various areas of body, uh, how they react contacting kombucha material. And this is a t-shirt also used in this spectra mission. Uh, by the commander Sarah Jane Pell. Um, maybe I should say more general about why we are doing this. So probably all of you know that one of the latest ecological problems when it comes to the use of gloves is the issue of biodegradability. Although items of clothing are used for a relatively long period, even by several uh, consecutive users, uh, they have to be regularly washed, which often results in the release of fibers into water. And these fibers are mainly synthetic, such um, are not um, biodegrada biodegradable. In consequence, they are accumulated in aquatic organisms, which is devastating for the entire natural environment. Moreover, the dimensions of such fibers may reach even the nanoscale. Thus, they cannot be easily filtered out and may pollute drinking water and also accumulate in human or animal organisms. In addition, the fashion industry has become one of the major contributors to water pollution, carbon dioxide emission and waste. Therefore, it's crucial to introduce ecologically friendly technologies into production of textiles and post-production treatment of fabrics to use as an example. Yeah, here, here are our analog astronauts of Spectra mission um, testing the kombucha biomaterial. What is even more interesting uh, about kombucha materials and materials, ecological clothing in general, Mm, is that issues of ecological clothing production 
and their biodegradability will soon affect not only the population living on our planet, but also extraterrestrial human colonies. The topic of clubs is a challenge for astronauts and it will soon become crucial due to the increasing number of planned space travels. Um, as you know, textiles that are sent to space are not recycled under such conditions and cannot be washed since space washing machine does not exist yet. Uh, more importantly, water is highly limited in the outer space. So, the ideal solution would be clothing based on natural fabrics, which would be obtained from sources that could be cultivated or grown even in the most challenging conditions, such as spaceships um, or underwater. Under ideal conditions, these materials could be biodegradable and the, the vast obtained biomass could be returned to the circulation by being reused in bioreactors. That's what we really would like to achieve. Mm. And here are the mm, some photos from uh, Spectra mission uh, showing that at least this project um, was very successful. There were no allergic responses uh, on the skin of our analog astronauts. Um, also, wearing a t-shirt was um, was okay. Maybe not. Um, this was not a full, you know, um, feeling full experience of kombucha material, but uh, we got feedback that this material was cooling down when it was hot and it was warming up when it was cold. So it was very interesting result. What we do now, we try to uh, create some intelligence, some, some projects that will, will really work and will be very precise and accurate and sustainable. So what we do now, we try to um, develop environmentally friendly bacterial cellulose 3D printing method for production of customized fabrics in isolated spaces. And of course, uh, our technical objectives are the same. So to solve one of the largest global problems, synthetic materials, biodegradability. And we want to achieve this uh, by development of practical, sustainable, environmentally friendly and low cost bacterial cellulose 3D printer. Uh, we call it BC3D. Uh, we would like to design and integrate natural filaments cultivated in situ. Uh, so all filaments that will be used to produce this kind of clothing um, should be natural and biodegradable. And then we of course would like to increase uh, the autonomy in isolated environments, such marine platforms, such spaceships in the future. Mm, so we have to, of course, struggle with several kind of physics, <laughs> natural laws. But I think everything is possible. Uh, then, of course, we need to elaborate foldability of bacterial cellulose applied for large scale fabrics. So we would like to make a very small machine comparing to the size of clothing that this small machine can produce. Of course, it is of one side earning the space. Um, and the second, um, second thing is to make it as simple as possible. And here you see the um, draft of how it will look like. Uh, the material will be grown in the sterile liquid tank, which you can see here on this slide. Um, the tank will be not only sterile, but it will be controlled by several um, controllers, uh, microcontrollers. There will be a special alert system in order to ensure that everything is safe and is working properly. Uh, about fil filaments, I already told you, 
uh, there is also um, some problems now that we have with extrusion with the process uh, of printing so we need to have first some scaffold and then there will be bacterial cellulose um, growing on the scaffold so basically the printing uh, will be mainly the scaffold and seeding some acidic bacteria producing polymers and that's that's what we do now and we work in collaborations uh, with many um, universities now on this project and i hope that in two years we will have something very interesting to show thank you very much for listening and i hope that um, you like this idea if you have any questions uh, you can ask me i'm i'm very open to answer. Thank you so much.